Welcome to the next video in the Search for Better Health topic. This video will be looking at syllabus.9.4.31. Describe the contribution of Pasteur and Koch to our understanding of infectious diseases. So for this stop point, we need to look at both Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch and obviously get an understanding of how they contributed to our understanding of different infectious diseases during their time. So Louis Pasteur was born in France in 1822 and died in 1895. He is known to be the father of microbiology. Through his work, he helped to disprove the theory of spontaneous generation, which people believed that life just sort of came out of nowhere through an experiment he did using swan neck flasks. Now we'll actually be modeling Pasteur's experiment using swan neck flasks in classes as one of the, it is one of the mandatory experiments for this uh, syllabus unit. Okay, and basically he found, oh well, I'm not gonna really go into it, but as we know, or as we can see from the dot point, it says that he disproved the theory of spontaneous generation. So obviously by carrying out these investigations, he was able to see that uh, life had to come from somewhere, it didn't just pop out of thin air. So he showed that airborne microbes were able to cause rod-shaped bacteria that produced lactic acid, and lactic acid resulted in the souring of milk and wine. So he worked very closely with a winemaker who was having trouble uh, stopping his wine from going bad, basically, and having this really bitter taste. And when uh, Pasteur looked at it under the microscope, he could see that these little rod-shaped bacteria were present in some of the wine or the wine that had gone bad, but it wasn't present in the wine that was still good. And so through his testing, he came up with the process that we now know as pasteurization, where basically the wine and milk is heated to about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius for a few seconds. And basically the increase in temperature destroys the microbes that are present and then it stops the wine or the milk from going bad. So modern milk manufacturers still use this process of pasteurization today. So if next time you go to the fridge and grab some milk out to have it in your tea or coffee or with your cereal in the morning, have a look at it and I can guarantee that on the carton or on the bottle, it will say pasteurized. So just, just telling you that it has undergone this process where it was heated before it was then cooled and then packaged. So from the experiments using uh, the wine and the resulting development of the pasteurization process, Pasteur was able to show the link between microbes and disease. So the wine or the milk that had these microbes present had gone bad, so it wasn't carrying out its normal function, whereas the wine that was good didn't. So there was obviously some link between the two. So from his understanding of how disease worked, he was one of the first people that developed a vaccine. And in particular, he developed a vaccine for a disease called chicken cholera. And to do this, he used weakened strains of the disease. So this is exactly how we still create vaccines today. We have either weakened strains of the disease or killed strains of the disease, which are injected to us either orally or, or sorry, uh, given to us orally or injected into our skin. And then our immune system responds as if it is a normal example of the disease. So this provides us with immunity. And just like uh, Pasteur found back in the day where he injected domestic animals, those on the farm, uh, with this vaccine, and they did not contract chicken cholera. He also used Robert Koch's work on anthrax to develop a vaccine for this disease. So to test his vaccine, he injected 50 sheep, uh, or sorry, he collected 50 sheep, injected 25 of them with the vaccine, and 25 were not injected with the vaccine. Then he subjected all 50 of the sheep to the ANSAC, sorry, anthrax bacteria, and he found that the 25 sheep that were vaccinated survived and the 25 sheep that weren't died. So obviously this shows that vaccines are effective in controlling disease. And as we move through this topic, we'll be having a look at a, a couple of particular case studies that really shows the massive impact that vaccines have had in preventing infectious diseases around the world. So he later applied this knowledge to the disease rabies, and it was actually the first vaccine to be used on humans. Again, he helped to prevent people from getting uh, the rabies disease who were vaccinated. So obviously, you know, having a massive impact on the health and well-being of, of uh, many people. So these studies helped him to establish the principle of immunology. So linking the immune response to disease.
so understanding of the immune response. He had developed an effective way to help prevent the spread of infectious diseases. So we still get vaccines now. When you're born, we go through a series of uh, sort of mandatory vaccinations all through our lives to stop us to get from getting some very um, common infectious diseases. So we can thank all of that to Pasteur and his work back in the 1800s. So Robert Koch is a German doctor and he was born in 1843 and died in 1910. So there was obviously an overlap in the work between Pasteur and Koch. As we know, Pasteur used Koch's findings on anthrax. Um, so they obviously shared their information uh, through journals and things like that. And Pasteur was able to further develop Koch's work. So he is also, he is known, sorry, as the father of bacteriology. So bacteria ology study of so the study of bacteria he developed techniques of staining and isolating that allowed him to grow pure cultures of bacteria and found the cause of anthrax to be the bacterium anthrax bacillus and it was this anthrax uh, discovery so the discovery of the bacterium the specific bacteria anthrax bacillus that then pasteur used in his work so what Koch did is he took the blood of animals that had anthrax and he injected it into healthy animals. And what he found was that those animals that were once healthy eventually uh, developed exactly the same symptoms as those initial animals that had anthrax. This led him to be able to identify that a specific microorganism is responsible for causing a specific disease. So anthrax didn't cause chickenpox, it didn't cause cholera, it didn't cause tetanus anthrax bacteria only caused anthrax so this led him to then create a set of criteria or a set of rules that became known as Koch's postulates and Koch's postulate state so there's four of them so an organism that is that is thought to cause the disease so whether it's a bacteria or a virus must be present in all individuals showing the symptoms so if you had 57 people that were showing symptoms of anthrax and you took the blood of all 57 people, all 57 people must have the anthrax bacterium within um, in their blood. The organism must be able to be isolated, so removed from the individual and grown as a pure culture, so on a petri dish in the lab. Then the organisms from the pure culture must produce disease symptoms when injected into a healthy host. So if you take the blood from one of those 57 anthrax patients, you culture the bacteria in a petri dish, and then that culture that you've grown in that petri dish, remove the bacteria and inject them into a healthy person, that person will show exactly the same symptoms as one of your 57 original anthrax patients. Then organisms must be re-isolated, regrown as pure culture, and identified as the same organism as the original culture. So you would then take that person that you've just infected with the grown bacteria, take the bacteria, regrow it, and find that it is exactly the same thing. So this just shows us in diagrammatic form how Koch's postulates works. Okay, so you take the suspected pathogen, so the disease causing agent from the organism, you grow it in a sample of agar on a petri dish, you then inject it into a healthy animal. That animal then uh, becomes sick, exactly the same as the original animal, and then you're able to remove exactly the same um, pathogen and it grows to look exactly the same on the Petri dish. So by using these postulates, Robert Koch was later involved in the discovery of bacteria that caused a number of different diseases that killed a lot of people back in that time, including typhoid, cholera, diphtheria, tetanus, and tuberculosis. And in 1905, so five years before he died, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology for his work on tuberculosis. So we can thank both Robert Koch and uh, Louis Pasteur for their work all that time ago on infectious diseases. We still use exactly the same procedures now. If you're sick, you'll go to the doctor, they'll take a throat swab or they'll take a swab of an infected area, they'll grow the culture and try to determine what it is. And then through the work of Pasteur, we now have some amazing vaccines that are helping to save a lot of people from some seriously infectious diseases. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.